Make this style honor roll with the new fall collection from American Eagle. Visit AE.com or your nearest store to shop retro graphic tees, super comfy jeans, and even more back-to-school styles. For the ladies, American Eagle has so many amazing jeans to choose from, including the mom straight jean, the 90s boyfriend jean, and the super high-waisted flare jean. And for the gentlemen, make sure to check out the Air Flex 360. It has maximum flexibility and the structured look of rigid denim. All-in-one revolutionary pair of jeans. For action, Access to the best perks and rewards at American Eagle, make sure to check out the Real Rewards credit card. You can get an extra 30% off your purchase and free shipping and returns. Right now, they are offering an exclusive offer for my listeners. Open a new account by September 30th, 2021, and get a $50 bonus reward loaded to your account after you make your first purchase with your Real Rewards credit card. Text Jordan, that's J O R D Y N, to 37585 to see if you pre qualify. Subject to credit approval and a Real Rewards credit card must be used as sole payment type. Must be 18 years or older to apply. Text messaging rates may apply. What's up, everybody? Happy Thursday. It's so good to be back on a normal schedule today. I feel like my life has become a little bit more put together. And it's, I think, showing because, you know, I'm, I'm back on my shiz, okay? We have another episode coming out to you guys today. We have the beautiful Indiana here today. Hi, guys. She's also a podcast host. I am. She's also been in the industry almost as long as I have. Mm-hmm. She's also a singer, a model. She's also an actress. She, what, what, what do you not do? Wow, you really I did your easier. research. Good job. <laughs> it's easier to say what you don't do. What um, do you not do? Do. Dance. So you, don't you dance. have that on me. Yeah, 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 I don't dance for absolutely anything. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty, pretty uncoordinated when it comes to that. I think if you literally put me in a room with a professional dancer for like five hours, I wouldn't be able to tell you what happened. So, so there hasn't been a TikTok trend that you've just nailed. <sighs> No, probably not. I'm going to be honest. No, not really. Um, I wish I wish I had that ability to just be like, <laughs> yeah, I just don't. And that's okay. Like, Is I, it a rhythm thing? It's not a rhythm thing. It's just a – I don't – do you know how it's – no, okay. If somebody gave me, like, the moves to something, I could do them. Just, like, they're not executed well. Does that make any sense? I'm not flexible. I, like – Do you have swag? No, I don't have swag at all. So that is that. Do you know what I mean? You know, I think people were born with swag. Some people were. And that's really, okay. You can't really teach swag. You can't really teach the swag. And that's okay. And <laughs> I have I have grown up accepting the fact that I don't have the swag to be a dancer. You know what? I, it, no matter how hard I try, it's just, it is what it is. It's the one thing on my resume I cannot put on. So. Can fine. you juggle? No, I also can't put juggling on my resume. Actually, no, I can. Little t- the tangerines, the little cuties. Yeah, that's. But that's actually that's the only thing I can juggle. That's actually really good. I support yeah, that. Thank you. So <laughs> when you're creating content on TikTok, you do seem to do more like thought out, like almost skits, like mm-hmm. comedy, pretty, like normal things. Mm-hmm. So, like, what would you say is like what you're most known for on social media? On social media, I think I'm most known for like doing my like little skit videos or like my um, I think like one of my videos that recently went super viral viral was like uh, ha- walking in and reacting to your boyfriend cheating on you. Something like that. I got like 12 million views or something. Jeez. So like things like that I'm super known for, I guess, or like mm-hmm. I do a bit with Zach, who I do the podcast with mm-hmm. um, called uh Asking guys questions girls are too afraid to ask. And that's on YouTube too, right? You do that? No, we used to do it on YouTube and then we're like, actually, this is just, we can just cut it into a TikTok video. So we just do clips of that. Um, Little Mm -hmm. skip videos. Uh, That's pretty much what I'm known for on like social media now. Um, It used to be a red theme that I had going for about four years. I was just going to talk about that. Yeah, I had that red theme going for four years. How Um, did you get out of that? I just posted something without red. I was like, I can't do this anymore. I literally had like a breaking point. I was like, these photos are so good. And I'm, it's like, it got to a point of like, um, dimming my creativity on like whatever I did online or like, I literally wear outfits purely because it had red, not because I actually liked what I was wearing or doing. So I was like, I gotta not do this anymore because it's becoming difficult and it's no. When she says red thing, you guys, she means full fledged aesthetic of, all like if you, okay you're you looked like a red tumblr account yeah 100 percent. and it me just taking a normal picture is hard enough <laughs> yeah me trying to like find a filter is hard enough but at the same time it's almost maybe easier because you're like okay like i have to wear this and like this is the filter that yeah. works and like whatever 
but she literally became this like you would not you couldn't wear any other color you couldn't post anything else and if i did like if i ever went to an event and i didn't wear red everyone be like where's your red where's your red like every time like and it wasn't do you just, hate like, the color now i don't hate the color now but i'm pretty sick of it like i it, i went so far i dyed the underneath of my hair red at I one remember point that. like i i it, you look up red aesthetic on Pinterest and like that was my Instagram pretty much. Like it literally, literally was you that. probably are the pictures on. Yeah, one hundred percent. I've actually seen some of my red Instagram like photos on Pinterest and I'm like, then I'm doing it right. I did it right. Um, you for sure did it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just got to a point of like, yes, it became like a uniform. It was just like, OK, well, I got to wear red and I got to do this. Great. But then I got to the point of like, OK, I'm out of I've gone to Forever 21 and bought every red cropped up I can find. Like I've taken a photo with every red thing in L.A. at this point. I can't do it anymore. And how long ago did you drop that? About a month or two ago. Like, really not long. Like, it literally was going on for about four years. And I broke it once. One time. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Even with IGTV covers, I'd make sure there was red in them. That's insane. I just can't even think about it. I remember one summer I had, like, a, a blue hue, like, on all my photos. But I... Because it was like a hue I just put on top mm -hmm. to make it, like you know, like imagine, y'all, when it was like the borders of Instagram. Oh my gosh. She did the red thing for longer than that was yeah, 100%. a thing. Like, I'm like, that's four that's, years. It's dedication. I mean, it shows that you really can, you know, put your mind to something. Well, it was the first <laughs> thing that, do like, anything. 100%. I guess it was like the first thing that, like, um, so I started social media probably in 2017. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like 2015, 16. Yeah. So like I, because I already knew you like mm -hmm. from, not knew you, but I knew you like on social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was when Musical.ly was super, super big. Wow, and yeah. And I remember like um, I didn't have a following back in 2017 when I first started the show Chicken Girls that I was on. Yes, Chicken Girls. Oh, Chicken Girls. Um, I started that show at 2,000 followers. So I really had like no followers. But back then, everybody on that were all musically stars. Like any, oh, sorry, Jules LeBlanc now. Um, she had a couple million on TikTok. Uh, yeah, musically. musically. Oh my gosh. I'm um, musically at that point. And so I was going into this being like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Like, I did not know about social. I didn't even know what the app Musical.ly was. I really did not know what Musical.ly was until mm. I started it. And I was like, I got to I gotta do this. Like, this is what I have to do. Can so, you yeah. explain Chicken Girls a little bit more to everybody? Yeah. So I started on a show called Chicken Girls on the Brat Network. YouTube channel. YouTube channel. Um, Gosh. It would have been. 2015, right? Two th no. no 17, 17, sorry. 17, 17. 2017, it had like. 25,000 followers at the time and I think it now it's at like 3 million or something. But the views are The crazy. views on Chicken Girls, peak Chicken Girls, we were getting like 11, 12 to 15 million views an episode. Sometimes 50 yeah, million. Yeah, dude. That was on our, our movie. I think we got like 20 to 30, 50 million. It was crazy. Like crazy. So like, basically you just tried out for this show, like audition. Yeah, 100%. And basically it was, it's this TV show. Mm-hmm. That and it ended up being actually directed by Nayib. Mm -hmm. Shout out Nayib, everybody. Yeah, Nayib. But basically, you book this show, and everyone else in the show is like literally internet famous. Yeah, it's on YouTube. Yeah, you are one of the main people in the show, mm -hmm. and you become even more mm -hmm. like of a main character. You meet all these people who are famous on Musically. Mm -hmm. You become a muser. Mm. Technically. Well, yeah, I guess so. Almost I, on accident. Yeah, li I didn't really, I never gained my following on Musically first. I gained it on Instagram. Like, that's how I started to oh, get okay, popular. Okay. I only, uh, when TikTok started, I think I had maybe not even 200,000 followers when TikTok started. Like, I, I really didn't have a following. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did, like, 200,000 is a lot, but, like, yeah, not yeah, yeah. really. Um, I my following skyrocketed on Instagram when Musically started to die down and TikTok wasn't at its peak just yet. That's where my following came. Oh, was, okay. It was on Instagram. It's like 2019 almost. 18, 19. 2018, 2019 was when my Instagram started to grow. And then all of 2020, at the beginning of 2020, I think I started with just under a million followers. Mm. And then now I'm at almost five on TikTok. Yeah. yeah so you crazy. really have been killing it with the skits and everything my favorite one that i've seen recently is you he's like oh, indiana dresses like a boy and then you try on all these things oh my gosh yeah i loved that video oh thank you i think like after that i was like i want her on my podcast <laughs> thank like, this you. is so cute yeah we do a lot of those we started doing those a while ago that was like I one of our those. first viral videos but i just saw it for the first time thank you <laughs> so i was like 
Oh my God. And then I watched like all of her TikToks. Like you guys have to go and follow her on TikTok. And if you, and if you do go to the comment section and say you came from the podcast. Oh, do that. I would love that. And then we can see who's like see who's listening. See who's listening and see who's listening to you. Yes. Um, oh, are you ever so busy that you can't even shave your legs at home? This is personal for me. Okay. I have had such a stressful month that I kid you not, I have a mom bag in my car and in my purse, I have like a small little baggy. I have one of these razors in my mom bag, in my shower, and in my personal purse. Like car, purse, home. Anywhere I go, I have one of these. And I also have one at like two of my friends' houses. But anyways, I am just obsessed with clean shaved legs especially before you go to bed and in those sheets oh, just thinking about that makes me happy guys little little things in life make me happy but I've been obsessed with the Gillette Venus it's like a, such a cute color too but I have other colors as well so I just wanted to put you guys on and talk about my favorite things about the Gillette Venus razor. <laughs> so this one is the Venus for pubic hair and skin razor. It's optimally spaced out blades to allow the razor to cut hair while barely touching the skin. This razor minimizes irritation in the pubic area where the skin is delicate and the hair is coarse. The skin smoothing exfoliant is great prior to shaving or in between hair removal days to help protect against cuts. Their two-in-one cleanser and shave gel protects skin from irritation during the shave and can be used as a shave gel or as a daily gentle cleanser. And the Daily Smoothing Serum helps maintain skin hydration and reduce itching. Check out GilletteVenus.com to learn more about why these products have been flying off the shelves everywhere. Go get it, trust me. <laughs> Make this style on a roll with the new fall collection from American Eagle. Visit AE.com or your nearest store to shop retro graphic tees, super comfy jeans, and even more back-to-school styles. For the ladies, American Eagle has so many amazing jeans to choose from, including the mom straight jean, the 90s boyfriend jean, and the super high-waisted flare jean. And for the gentlemen, make sure to check out the Airflex 360. It has maximum flexibility and the structured look of rigid denim. All-in-one revolutionary pair of jeans. For action, access to the best perks and rewards at American Eagle, make sure to check out the Real Rewards credit card. You can get an extra 30% off your purchase and free shipping and returns. Right now, they're offering an exclusive offer for my listeners. Open a new account by September 30th, 2021 and get a $50 bonus reward loaded to your account after you make your first purchase with your Real Rewards credit card. Text JORDAN, that's J-O-R-D-Y-N to 37585 to see if you pre-qualify. Subject to credit approval and a Real Rewards credit card must be used as sole payment type. Must be 18 years or older to apply. Text messaging rates may apply. Do your friends tell you you should start your own podcast? Or are you the friend that has a great idea for a show but don't know how to get it started? Now's the time to take it to the next level with Self Made, the podcast edition. Podcast One and Launchpad One are giving you the opportunity to become the next great podcaster. Compete for a year long contract worth $100,000 with Podcast One, the biggest podcast network in the business. If you have an existing podcast or you're looking to start your own, Self Made is for you. Open submissions are happening now through September 3rd. Go to launchpad1.com slash self-made to learn more. See official rules and sign up for your chance to win. That's launchpad, O-N-E dot com slash self-made. After Chicken Girls, you also started to sing and write and put out songs. Yeah. And let's talk more about how you transitioned from being an actress to a musician as well. So yeah, I kind of put the, not acting on hold, but I definitely, so I transitioned out of uh, chicken girls at some point and you were singing on chicken girls a little right yeah a little but yeah. not really um so yeah i transitioned out of chicken girls because i'd been on the show for four years i think they're literally about to come out with their ninth season like they're still going a lot of people were asking if you were going to be in the ninth season i know from what i'm i mean i, I haven't shot anything so yeah. <laughs> i mean they might do flashbacks or anything but as far as i'm concerned i'm not in the ninth mm -hmm. season um yeah, so I transitioned out of that. I was also working on other things. At the time, mm -hmm. I shot a movie uh, in season six. I was doing a movie called Hero Mode, mm -hmm. which just came out. Um, and then I was, I just booked another movie. I was too busy to kind of like balance my schedule mm -hmm. and realize that I had to kind of like move on, like leave yeah. that, like graduate kind of thing. Yeah. Um, From so, school, literally. Yeah, literally. Uh, so I started doing um, music, which mm -hmm. is something that I've always done. I just never 
put anything out. Or, never. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm Australian. Also, yes. there's that. <laughs> I never put anything out or never. Um, I don't know. It wasn't a main thing for me until I started writing some really cool songs that I actually enjoyed. Like, Smoke in My Eyes was, like, one of my first songs. And I wrote some songs for Brat, like, the theme yeah. songs for a couple songs, uh, for a couple shows. Uh, and, yeah, just started doing music. It's kind of been on hold recently, though, mm-hmm. for me. Because you've been just acting mainly. like right Yeah, now. I've been super, super busy with my acting, which has been great. But, yeah. um yeah, I haven't really been focusing on my music recently, not for any other reason than I haven't really been inspired to do it recently. I just haven't felt like anything that I was putting out was an accurate representation of who I was and who I wanted no more to be as an theme. artist. Yeah, literally. I needed to move on from a very big – I had like a lot of changes in my in my life last year and I kind of needed to pack everything up, put it in a box and put it away and just – kind of move on and start a new life. I love that. Yeah. I feel like low key everyone's been doing that recently. I feel like 2020 being, you know, at home and not seeing people mm-hmm. and not doing as many things. Um I feel like it in some way, like a small percentage of people have been like there's so many things that I want to do now and I feel like it brought more inspiration to people. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like it put a lot of people stuck. 100%. So it's just like a lot of people were using, you know, the time at home to work on future things. And Mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's like not everyone can have the resources at home. But with us, like TikTok really like how you said, like now you're at five million and you probably like really focused on TikTok. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it like changed my life completely, completely like. Uh, when I, so it was beginning of 2020 when yeah. the lockdown was first announced, I was living off of doing acting gigs and brand deals. And I was like, I, I don't know what to do. Like I, I can't go out and see anybody because if I post with them, I get destroyed online for breaking COVID, which I wasn't going to do anyway. Cause I have my mom in my house. Like yep. I have really severe asthma so if it's a respiratory virus yes. like I would kind of be screwed so I was really locked in my house for for quite some time and I was like I don't know what to yeah. do like it got to the point where I was like I have to move back home I can't pay my rent like I literally cannot pay my rent right now I do not what to I do not know what to do um Damn. and then I Zach came over one time to record with um, a friend that was staying at my place and he had to like get tested and quarantined and all that. It was like this big hassle and I was kind of even at the point where I was like, I don't even know if I want to see people. Like I was really um, kind of like... There were so many times too where it was like, Everything's open. Like everything's open. Everything's yeah. closed. Everything's, everything's open, open. Everything's closed. So it's just I was like, like oh, I don't know what to do. So he came over. We shot one video, and it ended up getting like seven million views, and it blew us both up. Um, and then I was like, oh, now I can eat. Like I can, I can pay my rent, and like I'm not gonna be scared of what's gonna happen. So that's how I started to gain following, make money. Like and the creator same. fund came out. Yeah, about I never in April, right? Yeah, I never used the creator fund because I turned it on for a little bit, and then I felt like it weirdly dropped everyone. A lot of people were saying that, but yeah. I have it on. So weird. Yeah. I, and I, some of my videos do really well. Yeah, mine don't whenever I have it on. So I turned it off. I was like, I don't need this. Um, so I just do brand deals now. Whoa, dang. What if I really just turned it off and tested it for a month? You test it for a month. I mean, if it's not something you need, then test it. I mean, I like don't, but like sometimes it's nice. <laughs> and sometimes it's nice. You're like, no, this is nice. I mean. Yeah. So yeah, you literally were at like almost a low. Being oh, like, I was I have completely at a low. Home. completely at a low and I was like also in a in a very bad headspace like I was very depressed in a super toxic relationship um which is not something that was ever publicized like nobody knew that I was in a relationship nobody knew that it was really toxic nobody knew that I was at a low I would never let the world see that um and it's Ugh. a recent thing for me to like talk about yeah. because I was like this is so important to talk about mental health and how yep. much it was affected during a lockdown period and somebody that I used to be somebody that needed to go out and socialize to distract myself and without falling into like a darkness. That's what I needed to do. Like I needed to go see people. And then I you're to, stuck at home. And then I'm stuck at home and it gets even worse. And now I've developed severe social anxiety where I'm like. So many people. Oh, are like, I hate going out. I don't want to see anyone. Like unless I previously know them and I know that I, unless I. Or have of, been to a place. Yeah. With that person or I know I can have yeah. an ongoing conversation. Yeah, it, it was such a my life literally three sixty like that's what happened. So yeah, because now yeah you're back. Mm-hmm. Holy crap! I 
a, the social anxiety thing is so, it's becoming so normal now, mm -hmm. which is almost good because people don't feel alone, mm -hmm. but it's not normal for people to like feel like that. No, and I think a, a huge, a huge reason for the social anxiety, and I'm sure that you know about this because you've been in this industry since what, a child? Like, yeah. Yeah, since a child. Um, it was, uh, TikTokers never had to worry about cameras or like paparazzi or yeah. anything like that. Like we weren't really the ones that had the attention in that way until the um, Hollywood Fixer and the Kevins and the those people of the world started to come out. Yep. And I would, I was a little Boa Steakhouse Nights. Oh, Boa Steakhouse Nights, Saddle Ranch. Like, yep. And you would want to go to those places because your friends are there. And also, it is fun for the first two, three times that you get paparazzi. Like, it's as cool as you think it is. It like, is. Like, it's not. And if people, like, even, like, to this, or even in the beginning when people thought it was cool, you'd be like, oh, my God, stop. <laughs> no, yeah, like, you have to. Because then you look, like, conceited if you're like, oh, my God, hi. And it's so, like, this is what we, like, us being influencers and being on TikTok, it's like, Low key, that is the goal to yeah. be paparazzi. So then, like when it happens, it sometimes bugs me when people are like that. They're yeah. like, "Oh, like it's so annoying." It's like, dude, you asked for this. You're an influencer. Like yeah, you this do is literally what you sign up for. Yeah, it's whether or not it's something that you like or you don't. It's definitely in the in the rules list of when you enter the industry in any form, whether it's influencing, acting, singing. If you're putting yourself out on a public platform, you open yourself up to public scrutiny, to public opinions, to the public eye, literally. So that's kind of like what happens. It is what it yeah. is kind of thing. Um, <laughs> but that only made my social anxiety get worse because yeah. I would go out and I was like, well, what if someone's filming me right now? And then they take something out of context. Like, what if somebody, Especially with the whole COVID like yeah, thing. I was like, what if they take it out of context? What if I say something dumb because I'm I'm nervous and I have really bad social anxiety and sometimes I I babble on and say the wrong things or anything, right? It only right. made it get so much worse. And I constantly think of a time where I was literally sitting at a, at a lunch at Earth Cafe mm -hmm. um, with one of my friends just literally almost bawling my eyes out being like, I am so anxious to be in public now. Like, I can't, I literally just want to lock myself in my room. Like, that's how bad this is getting. And he was like, you're fine. Like, you're fine. Like, you know, the only places they really go is Saddle Ranch and Boa. Like, you don't have to worry anywhere else. And I was like, I got you know what? to earth. I was like, you're right. It's fine. It's fine. Not even two seconds later, does Kevin like show up and he's like, hi. And I'm like, literally almost in tears. And I'm like, uh, okay, bye. Like, and I literally, I DM'd him later and I was like, please don't post that. Like, please just have a little bit of decency for me and just please don't post that. Like, he I was, didn't? He didn't post it. I was like, I'm not in the headspace to where I need something out like that when I, I was so caught off guard and I didn't understand. Like, I, I'm not used to this at all. Like, please. And he was like, okay, I respect that. I'm sorry. And like, didn't post it. But I was like, Ugh. you know what I mean? Yeah, I totally know what you so, mean. So yeah. Dang. Well, literally it's, it's crazy too because it is like tick like you think that people see us on the side of the street and they're like oh like they just do TikTok or like at f at first when TikTok was becoming a thing it was so cringy at the beginning oh one hundred percent so still yeah, yeah yeah I mean still some people are like oh you're hanging out with TikTokers or yeah you're, the name is just but it's like people have no idea actually like what goes into it mm -mm. especially with your like creative videos oh, yeah. me yeah sometimes I literally open the app and do a watch dance. a dance once learn like, like and I know though. it and I do it but at the same time I did create it for a really long time to where now I feel like I I can't take two seconds and post a video and like whatever but at the same time like you put so much thought into your videos like mm -hmm. everything that you do is like thoughtful and like tal like creative and talented and like it's it puts a lot of pressure on you I bet um, yeah, I think that doing those skits is something that Zach and I really enjoy. Like, mm -hmm. it is fun for us. Um, and he is a creative genius and he's the funniest person I know. Um, so he's super witty and comes up with a lot and he's definitely opened my mind to becoming more of a writer and, mm -hmm. uh, thinking of more things comically and stuff. Cause I was like, you know what? I don't just have to be a pretty face. I can do things that are funny and I can be funny online. Um, so that's what I really enjoy now. And it yeah. also brings out like my acting side because for sure, like, that's you're using what I love. your talent. Like, I love yeah. that. But also I don't think that people should ever look at 
anyone that doesn't do those things any differently. Like you're a dancer. That's what you do. And that's yeah. what you post. Like that you spent years training and dancing. And if you want to take two seconds to film a stupid video, you can, because I do the same thing. Yeah, we all Or do if you want to take four hours and film a skip video, you can. Like, and it, collab with people, meet exactly. up with people. It is it's the, different. It's social media. Like there's the, the beauty of it is there are no rules. Like you and can do whatever you want. And if people like- Literally. If people- reciprocate to that like big deal like you get millions of views for dancing i wish i could do that i hey. wish i could do that you know what i mean i mean whether but the thing is too is just like something that is so funny to someone could be so create like you could like there's since there's so many people in the world and tiktok is such a big platform that there is literally something for everybody to watch yeah like and i love that the for you page is so cut like uh-huh I yeah. literally feel like we're doing a TikTok brand right yeah, now. Yeah, 100%. Or just, hey, Why am I, I'm going to stop talking about <laughs> the app right now. Wow. I feel like that was just a good insight for, even to see, like, for you to open up about, like, even, like, before the pandemic and mm -hmm. you, like, you were at such a low and how 100%. you got through it and, like, where you are now. I feel like it's just really important to hear because even, like, me, like, my, like, it's just really good to hear someone's full story. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we haven't done that in a while on the podcast. So yeah. I'm just, I'm thanking you for like oh, opening welcome. up and <laughs> you know just being you keep it up Thanks. and <laughs> I love everything that you obviously do I do want to switch the gears to talk more about like girly TMI things let's do it I never get to talk about things like this because her podcast let them let them in on your little podcast my podcast is with two guys called dropouts um I love them very much they're <laughs> my two best friends in the entire world but I can never talk about girly things because it's Two guys, and I can't, so. <laughs> but you do sometimes. I do I, sometimes, yeah. and all the reactions I get is, <sighs> <sighs> and I'm like, well, you asked, so. <laughs> well, you know. asked. Ooh, okay, so this is called, I just Googled this, you guys. I'm obviously not doing 100, but it's 100 ridiculous TMI tag questions that no one ever asks. Let's do it. Are yeah. you compatible with the zodiac sign it says you should be? <sighs> I don't even wait. Okay, look. Yeah. I'll be Do you know what what yeah. are you? I'm a I'm a cusp, so I'm born on the twenty third of August. So my birthday was like Scorpio. No, no, no. It's a Virgo Leo. Virgo Leo. Virgo Leo or Leo Virgo. I don't know. Something like that. Scorpio is No. Wait, when? I'm a Virgo August twenty third. Virgo Leo. August. I thought you said mm. October, so sorry. sorry no, sorry. August. Um Wait. Happy birthday. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was recent. It was like a week. Are ago. you nineteen? Yeah, I just turned nineteen. I'm so um, good. <laughs> um I don't know. I need to see who I'm compatible with. I don't know how I feel about the whole Zodiac thing. I think cancer. I, I, I want to believe in it, but I also kind of am like, well, I mean, the things that they say are just absolutely... Well, maybe because you're on the cusp, so it's hard. It is. I'm like, I read Virgo things, and I'm like, well, anyone can relate to that if you try hard enough. Do you know what I mean? Okay. True. I mean, you know what I, I mean? am such a believer. Okay, well, then I am, that's fine. If that's what tickles your fancy. I am literally... <laughs> Whatever tickles your fancy. I started saying it like two weeks ago. My mom, I was in Michigan. I said it. Um, <laughs> it's such a mom thing to say. Yeah, she's like, what are you? I'm no, saying. no. She was like judging me. She's like, where did you hear that? Because like I have such like a addictive personality to even oh, like if too. someone says something funny, I pick it up and I could become that person. I do the same thing. It says my mind most compatible are fellow water signs, Cancer and Scorpio. What are you? Pisces. Oh, you're Pisces. I'm such a Pisces. I don't know who I'm compatible I, with. I think I find that to be true, but... I have two very strong friendships of Scorpios. Mm -hmm. I've never date uh, in, a, in a Cancer. I've dated a Scorpio. Didn't really go well for me, and I have never dated a Cancer. But two of my very closest, best, longest friends are those two signs. So yeah, I don't know. I think Zach's a Virgo, um, mm. and then uh, Jared is a Gemini. Um, okay, so our answers are kind of like no. Yes. No, yes. Yes. No. It's Maybe what, it's friendship. Uh, yeah. Sure. What is your biggest turn off? Like meaning, like literally, when it's like sexy time. What is your biggest turn off? A bad smell. Like bad smell. <gasps> oh, I. Body odors. I'm like. Ugh. Personal hygiene is very. It's, it's not hard. Just use some body wash. It's really not hard. It's really not, and it shows a lot about you. Yeah. If I don't, un I really don't get it. I Just don't. Body wash. It's I not hard. I oh I feel like the, the one compliment I get a lot, and you were talking about this on the on your podcast with Katie Sigmund, mm -hmm. 
Um, one of your favorite compliments is when you someone says you smell good. Yeah, that's one of my favorite compliments, and people tell it to me all the time because I douse my body in perfume. Yeah, so which like, perfume I, do you use, or do you not share it? Well, no, I don't so, mind. I use a bunch. So my three like main is Chanel, Chance. Okay. Um, oh yeah, Chance, Giorgio, Chance, uh, Giorgio Armani C, the red. Oh, wait, bottle. I have both of these that oh, you mentioned. Okay, and then Givenchy Irresistible. I haven't had that. Oh my god, it's Givenchy. the best. Givenchy. Um, I. I don't really care. I mean, it is what it is. I, mean, I literally don't say mine. I mean, thousands of people have bought that perfume, so. <laughs> I guess. I just have this but thing it's where never it's never going like, to smell as good as it smells on me. Yeah, right? So, like, the ones I use are called parfumes to oh. where they actually, ch- like, it smells different on you than someone else. 100%. So, even if it's, like. The same one. Like, yeah. my, I have, like, they're the Eau de Parfums yeah. or whatever. They're the stronger scent. So, they change depending on your body oil and yeah. how your body reacts. So Wait, so that's, yeah, exactly. I said that on my podcast. It's so like, I just remember, even when, I, did, I guess I just have a strong scent, too. Mm-hmm. I can smell someone in a room. Me, too. And it's like Me, too. Deodorant, body wash, brush hot. your teeth. It's Put on cologne as an extra, but the other stuff is just, like, You should like never base. smell bad. I know. Like, if you go to the gym and you're sweating and then you don't You chat, get it. Okay, whatever. I get it. But also, like... And also, that's kind of hot. Yeah, I'm like, okay. Um, but also, like... Deodorant is not a hard thing to do, people. Body wash all over. Get a rag. People don't. Okay, I found out people don't use washcloths in the shower. Wait, I use like a, a loofah. Okay, yeah, loofah. But people. Not everyone use that. It's a. I. They and use, it gives you the KP stuff when but, you don't actually scrub yourself. What? Maybe people use doesn't. their hands to just. And I'm like, hold on. You got to scrub that. I use a washcloth and a loofah. And I, I get all the way down to my legs. I get everywhere. Behind my ears. My, everywhere. <laughs> it's not hard. Anyway, that's my thing. We'll move on to the next question. But don't smell bad. I, I hate love, it. I love going off. I'm literally it. like, ew. It's, ew. Okay. It's especially, even if you smell bad, at least put on deodorant or cologne. Dude, it's not hot. It's not hard. <laughs> well, here, I'll give you some Summer's Eve's wipes. Figure it out. <laughs> literally. She's got it all. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um... At what age did you have your first kiss? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I think I was 15 or 14. 14 or 15. I was 15. And I was dating the guy. This is a funny story, actually. Okay, let's go. Oh, my God. Okay, my first boyfriend was somebody from a band that we both dated members of. Um, and I was yes. like 14 or 15 at the time. And you would have yes. been, I don't know, 16 or 17. Um, yes, 16. 16. Um I was in that apartment when you got trapped in the bathroom and they broke down the door. Do you remember that? Wait, I have no, I have such a bad memory. Okay, yeah. So uh, you were in the bathroom and you got trapped in there and you're, well, people know that who you dated from New District, right? Yes, so now they Sean, do. Sean and one of the other members broke down the door and threw it off the balcony. And I was like, this is the first time I'd been over to this apartment and I literally was like, what the fuck? Oh, that's really nice of them to get me out. Yeah, they got you out. <laughs> they broke their door to get you out. So that was funny. Um, but anyway, so it was with one I of do the... N- how would I not remember that? Like, this shows you guys, like... I have a really good memory, I, I will be honest. I seriously do not. Yeah, I've got, like... I, don't even, I can't even tell you what the bathroom looks like. I have a... Re- not a photographic memory, but, like... I have a I, photographic memory. I have a very good memory. Like, I can remember things that nobody would... So when did we meet? I didn't meet you when you were dating them because you broke up not soon, quite soon after that. Okay, okay, um, okay. It was, I think I met you, might have met you at like an Insta Beach or something. Mm, mm. Was it Insta Beach? Would that have been 2016 though? Maybe Insta Skate. Maybe it was an Insta Skate. I, I don't know, some Instagram event, I think. Um, anyway, it was with the guy that I was dating. Um, we were dating for three months and I swerved him so many times. And I didn't, like, I, I was so nervous. I was so nervous. I'd never had my first kiss and I kept being like, ugh. <laughs> oh yeah, this is what we were talking about—the first kiss story. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. No, 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 you're good. But like, so wait, you were dating him and you never kissed him? For th- no, no, for three months I was dating him before we kissed. Cause I was nervous. Okay, I never had my first kiss. I was scared. <laughs> wait. Yeah, and he was what? older than me too. He was like. Uh, wait, I feel like I kn- I feel like I knew this. I probably have said it, or I. Because when I've you were over, I think they were talking about it like this they girl was. doesn't kiss it. Yeah, because I was scared. <laughs> I was a I was a baby. I was like fourteen years old, and I I lo- or maybe I was younger. Did you say like I love you before you kissed him? No, 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 definitely not. One hundred percent not. Um, I told him like I loved him like six or seven months into dating because I was nervous. Oh, so, oh, yeah, I thought you only dated for three months. No, 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 we dated for, like, a year and a half, but it was three. Oh, you dated him for that Yeah, we dated for a while. 
very long time. Um, but yeah. Was that your first? Oh yeah, first boyfriend. First boyfriend. Oh my god. Okay, yeah. so fi- that is a very good story. Yeah, it's embarrassing. <laughs> There's no way. And I, I recently spoke to Sean about it because I've known. Sean, I've been friends with him because he was on Chicken Girls. Like I've been friends with him for years. Yeah. Um, and he happened to be friends with both of my ex boyfriends now. Yes. But, um, I know. Yeah, we won't talk about that. Um, we were speaking Wait, about. Was that it. the toxic one? Yeah, super. To- yeah, let's just. Yeah, it's bad. Uh, him and Sean uh, were both like, dude. Like, what is up with this girl? And I was like, it's because I lied about my age at the beginning, too. <laughs> I told them I was, like, 14 turning 15 when I was 13 turning 14. <laughs> so. You guys, lying from the start just gets you in a mess later on. Oh, 100%. Life. And my birthday was in a month. And he was like, happy 15th. And I was like, how do I tell you I'm not 15? How did you tell him? I told him. I was like, ah. Uh, and he was like, I knew this whole time. Like, do you not think Google's a thing? And I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, famous birthdays, baby. Yeah. I didn't think I was any like popular enough for famous birthdays, but that was when you didn't have to be popular to have a famous birthdays. Like anyone just made one. I for really you. don't even think that you have to still be. <sighs> yeah. That's stressful. I'm glad that you told him. Yeah, I did. I had to. I had to. Oh, anyway. Wow. So how wait, how was the first kiss experience with this guy you were dating for three months? I think I need a little bit more info. So um, where were you? My room. Okay. Um, Literally, I, oh my gosh, I was so, I would, I didn't do anything. I didn't even make out with him until I was like, until like five months into our release. I was so scared. Like I was baby when it came to this stuff. Like I was just very nervous. I also grew up very Catholic too. So it was like not something that yeah, I was Yeah, this like, is not that like weird. No, no, no. I, I thought it was at the time though. Cause I was like, oh, I really like this guy. But I mean, it's definitely the first experience I've ever heard of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With someone yeah, like this, yeah. but it's not that weird. No, I guess it's not. I don't know. I was nervous. I'm a very, I'm a very nervous person when it comes to like anything to do with relationships. Like I, I would say I'm a pretty confident person, but when it comes to things like that, oh my gosh, I just am like, can't do it, so can't do it. You're in your room. So I'm in my room, and we we're talking. We we're watching a movie or something, like on my TV or laptop or anything. And I literally think he just turned around and grabbed my face and kissed me because he was just like, dude, we gotta get this done. And I literally looked at him and I went. And instant relief just came over my body. And I was like, oh, my God. He was just like, that wasn't so hard, was it? I was like, no, I was just scared. And he was just like, well, was that okay? And I was like, yeah, it was okay. He was honestly, as much as he was like kind of a a dick towards the end of the relationship, one of the best boyfriends I've had, he never pressured me into doing a thing. He never like, because we'd spoken about a first kiss before, obviously, but like, (laughs) So we, holes. Um, yeah, no. We'd never, he never pressured me to do a thing. If I wasn't comfortable with something, like, he wouldn't do it. Like, he asked me about mm-hmm. everything and anything. Like, he was really, really sweet and gentlemanlike mm-hmm. when it came to things like that. So, but yeah, very nervous. And I kind of, I also felt bad. Like, he's dating me. Like, he asked me to be his girlfriend and then I still didn't kiss him. Girl, get it together. Child. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Next. <laughs> Have you ever given or received a hickey? Yeah. Oh my god, I'm not even answering these. <laughs> no, <laughs> Whatever, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, yeah, 100%. Um, given or given? Received and given. Received. Um, the first time I got a hickey, uh, it was with my first boyfriend again. Um, wow, so you guys went from that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, no suck in the... <laughs> to, it was bad. Um, so... Cause that was the only thing that I would do. Cause I was just like, I, mm-hmm. I was a very Catholic girl. Like I was just like, not going past that. Um, mm-hmm. So you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. Um, I remember. Honestly. I remember the night. So it happened. Wait, I like how you just said I was. I was a very Catholic. Yeah, I, I am still Catholic. I'm just not as practicing as I was. Um, but I was like very religious back okay. then. Um, and then I don't know. It's not that I, I, I go in up and downs with my faith. It's not that I don't believe in God or yes. believe in Christ or Catholicism or anything. I just definitely go through some up to ups and downs with it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah we like don't anyone. need to get into no, that. No, no, we but, don't. But yeah. like, just like anyone. Yes. Anyway, regardless, um, the night before it happened, my mama had gone to Urban Outfitters. My and just, mama. Yeah, no. My mom had gone to Urban Outfitters. She happened to buy me this sweater and it was like high neck sweater. And I was like, thanks mom. Like, thanks. And she was just like, great. It was in my room. Whatever went down. And then I realized <laughs> I looked in the mirror and I was like, oh, like I had a ma-. Like it was big too. I was like, Oh my god. A bruise. Yeah, like I was like, oh my god, what do I do? What do I do? He was just like, dude, it's fine. Just 
just like just cover it with makeup. I was like, I don't think you understand how makeup works. Like, no. It doesn't work. Like you can always tell. Like and I was like, and I wasn't a person that wore a lot of makeup either. So like I couldn't put on a full face. Yeah. Whatever. And so and it was middle of summer too. <laughs> middle of summer. And I was just like, I'm just gonna have to wear a high neck for the next like week or however long this takes. And I came out and mom goes, why are you wearing that? It's like a million degrees out. I was like, I just like it and wanted to wear it because you got up for me. She goes, and you're gonna have a heat stroke out there. I was just like, no, 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 I'll be fine, I'll be fine. And she goes, take it off. You're gonna get too hot and overheat. I was like, I'm fine. I'm an adult. I can wear it. And I wore. Why do I feel like I seen you wearing this sweater? It's gray, high neck. I don't know. Um, literally, uh, I think I wore it at Insta Skate. So you that's might, why I'm. So- you actually have seen that sweater. Yeah. Um, I wore that for about a week. Sweated my ass off in the middle of July summer. Yeah. Yep. Sweated my ass off in that sweater. And there's no way my mom didn't know. She knows. She knows. Like it, it is what it is. Like yeah. you didn't change it up. That's no, because I didn't have anything else high neck. I'm literally like, spinning everywhere. I didn't have anything else high neck. I had to wear. You the- are really funny. Thanks. <laughs> It was the only thing I had to wear. And she, gosh, I was a good little Christian girl. Catholic, same thing. Yeah. I was a good Catholic girl. Nobody <laughs> could know. Nobody could know what went down in that room. And my dad was in town. <gasps> Child. <laughs> my dad was in town. And he if he had found out that a boy was not only in my room, <laughs> but had touched like had touched my neck and like kissed me. Oh my god. Child. He would not be alive today. I can Yo. tell you that. Oh. <laughs> You could, I could tell you that. My dad, like, was the type that I had to keep the door open and the light on. How was your first heartbreak? The worst. I would say, well, it depends. It, gosh, it was all with the same guy, I guess. That was my first, like, heartbreak. Um, I think the worst heartbreak I've had was the last one. But mm. the first one, it really came out of the blue for me. Because we were dating for, like, a year and a half. Same with Sean. Yeah, it really came out of the Those blue boy for band me. boys. Well... <laughs> God, God, um, it really came out of the blue for me. Like honestly, because we've been dating, and he'd gone away for a week in Ho- in Hawaii with like some people. I should probably not say. Oh, it doesn't fucking matter. Um, he'd gone away for a week in Hawaii, and then came back, and like we were just hanging out like normal. We went out for lunch. Like we also had never been in our in an argument ever. Like, yeah, we had nothing to argue about. We're children. Like, well, what are we gonna argue about? Um, so she took my ear. <laughs> like literally. Um, so he, we're out for lunch. We went out to Umami Burger, which is still to this day why I can't fucking go to that restaurant. Oh, I love Umami Burger, but I, yeah. they're like all closed. Yeah. So we went to Umami Burger. Um, Burger. <laughs> I paid for fucking lunch, by the way. Ubered home, because neither of us had a license. Ubered home. We're sitting on the couch. We're watching a movie. He pauses the movie and he goes, we got to talk. And I was just like, okay, what's up? He goes, this just isn't working. I, I quote, I quote, he said, you used to be so fucking cool and now you're not. Called his Uber and left three minutes later. Blocked me on everything in that Uber. And I never spoke to him again. Ever again? Never again! You never spoke to him? No, he blocked me on everything except my number. I texted him and I was like, yo, what? And he, he was just like, it's for the best. Blocked me from everything. Never heard from me again. Found out! Then I found out! Then I found out he'd been sleeping with a 26-year-old. Our whole relationship. All right, Indiana, it was so good having you on today. <laughs> Wait. Was this the first or the second? My first. No! My first boyfriend. He was my first kiss. Wait, the, oh... How? Oh, the boy band boy. Yes. I was, I was like 15. What's up? You're really going to do me like that? You're going to do me like that. <laughs> she's looking. She's talking right. How are you going to do someone so damn dirty? That's so dirty. That is so dirty. And you know what I did? Revenge. <laughs> I became successful. Biatch. And bought like one of his dream, not one of his dream cars, but like the his dream like brand of car I bought. And I just like. Yo. Is that not effed up? That's so effed up, right? Yeah. Anyway. And from this day forward, I will never really? date a damn musician again. 
I've dated two of them. Net three. Never again. I need to take some. I got tea. About the boy band boys? <laughs> no. About just musicians in general or just boys in general? Because damn, do I have I guess, some things to I say. I guess boys, yeah, whatever. Oh, my God. But, oh, my God. he. What did he say to you again? Just one more time for the people. <clears throat> and I quote, I don't know, man. You just used to be so fucking cool and now you're not. Lie, lie. Go Please to, goes to lunch. Uber's home. I I pay for lunch. I pay for the Uber. I pay for the damn Amazon Prime video that we rented. You're in my household. The audacity of this man. The audacity of this Wee. man to tell, look me in the eye, and not even come up with an excuse of being like, you know what? Like I, I mean, just I'm in a different place in my life, or I just feel like I need to date somebody older. The honesty just really. I mean, like, I guess, thanks for the honesty, man, but <laughs> damn. How did that not ruin you? It did. Okay, okay. It did. That shit hurt for a while. It hurt until I realized, I was like, well, who am I crying over? What okay, exactly. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. All right. Um. Okay, no, we're just going to go to fan questions now. All right. <laughs> uh, uh, I feel awkward. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, the worst thing I think someone has said to me, like, lie. Lie, just lie, please. Come up with a different excuse than I used to be cool and now I'm not. You know how insecure that made me as a 15-year-old girl to think I wasn't cool? Fan questions, what's up? Oh. Men. Literally. <laughs> Men. Men are trash. <laughs> I, I'm i gonna say that that answer you just gave me was technically the first question. Oh, okay. So it, it's, Describe your worst date. I'd say that's pretty. That was, that pretty, was a pretty bad, bad date. date. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty I'm, bad date. Yeah. How and why are you still single? I guess <laughs> we just got the answer. No, I'll be honest. Um, I recently got out of like a two and a half year relationship. Two mm -hmm. years. Um, I just I needed to I needed to be alone for a second. I'm so busy with work. That's where I am. I'm yep. not in the headspace of like wanting to be in a relationship. Oh, that's um, same. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's just, if it comes, it comes, but it's not something I'm looking for right now. So that's, I guess that's why. You're also, emotionally unavailable. That's yeah. what I say. Mm -hmm. You do what you want, but you're emotionally unavailable. unavailable. <laughs> what type of music do you like? Big fan of country music. Okay. I love country music. Um, that and, I don't know, pop, whatever. Whatever's kind of on the charts, but country music my favorite. Okay. Are you still close with Riley and Mads? Riley lives with me. Riley Lewis lives with me. Oh, for real? So yeah, pretty close. You guys have always been close though. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, uh, kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were both in like relationships at a certain time, so obviously yeah, yeah, we're not yeah. hanging out as much, but yeah, we've always been close. Um, and so yeah, Mads, you see her sister. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we live together. So yeah, I'd say we're pretty close. <laughs> okay. What was your first period story? Oh, this is a good one, actually. <laughs> um, all good. So it was after my first date with first boyfriend. I just, all my monumental moments were with this, with this guy. Um, first date with this, with this guy. Um, we we're out on a, on a date. Um, and by the grace of God, I wish it's nothing like too, it's actually nothing embarrassing at all. It's just, God was looking out for me on this day. We went on a date. I was wearing white jeans too. Went on a date, whatever. My mom picks me up, drives me home. The second I get home, I get my first period. And I literally look at God and I said, thank you. Thank you so much for saving me that embarrassment. That, so, yeah. I, I think I've had like a like a weird like clothes accident once and I was so embarrassed. It was my first time I was ever away from my mom. And I remember specifically I was doing a Paper Towns journey on an RV with me and Lexi Smith oh, and no. two guys. So it was two girls, two guys, and then like a camera guy, a driver, and like a, a supervisor technically. How old were you? Like I was like 15. Mm. I was – I was about to, I was also like almost going through a breakup with my first boyfriend. Um, I I had left for the first time. It was like a seven, eight, nine day thing, like mm -hmm. through Minnesota. Like, oh my God. you know, I didn't have access to anything and I wasn't prepared for it at all. Because at, at first I just, I think the real reason why I ended up getting on birth control like later was because of irregular periods, even when I was young. But mm -hmm. so I just never was expecting it. And I remember... I was going to the airport and obviously like I needed my phone because I was also like I had a boyfriend at the time and like it was kind of getting to the point where uh, I didn't I felt like he was drifting away. So I was mm -hmm. like, OK, obviously I need my phone. I need to talk to my mom. And I remember I left my phone in the car 
And my first like instinct was like, oh my god, like, and I was boarding like my I was so young. My mom could walk me to the gate mm. and then like leave from the actual mm-hmm. gate. And I remember they were I literally right before I went down that that jet bridge, I was like, where's my phone? And then I'm like, I'm telling you like a weird backstory to my first no, period fine. story, You're but good. like I, I like literally it. thought I wasn't gonna have my phone. So I'm like, my mom gave me her phone Aww. and she took my phone from the car, which also at the time I was so embarrassed because I had like text messages with my boyfriend mm-hmm. and like, yeah, that's we weren't fighting, but like, I didn't want my mom to like look at them. Yeah. So anyways, like I end up like having my, f- having her phone now and I'm like, thank God, like what if I, you know, I needed it for an emergency. And I remember I was wearing like jeans on like the second day of like the trip and you have to walk up like oh, you the didn't have stairs. your phone for like nine days no i had it the but whole time you had your mom's or oh, oh yeah you... I, have, I have my mom's phone yeah. i didn't have my my phone at no, all no child i would have just said i i'm gonna be late i'm sorry i'm missing the flight yeah but my mom was not getting a hold of my phone <laughs> right it was so <laughs> stressful so i think stress that's why i'm going with mm-hmm. it i think the stress of like my mom having my phone brought it on and like literally started my period so i'm i'm Obviously not prepared. We go to this, like, gas station, whatever, like, and I just remember everyone has to get back on the bus. And for some reason, like, I went first, and you have to go up, like, three or four steps to get onto this gigantic RV, like, Mm -hmm. up here. It's, like, this high. So, like, when you're going up the steps, I just remember, like, being, like, I felt like I was, like, being looked at, Mm -hmm. you know? You can kind of sense. And everyone is behind me. And then, like, bless her heart, the girl, Lexi, was, like, you have completely just, like, let out and everyone would just like seen it and it was like the two boys on the thing it's 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 weirdly not like it's actually not that embarrassing it's i know not, that you think about it now and, and it probably like, wasn't like it was just like you could see you know yeah. what i'm saying it wasn't like if if anything was bad i would have obviously known you yeah. know what i'm saying you know what I mean? but she was just like looking out for me and it i i yeah i just didn't have access to like anything like and i didn't want to ask and i felt like I, I couldn't just go into the store and, like, buy a box of, like, tampons or whatever. Like, it was just a lot. Yeah, I get it. <sighs> yeah, was I, first, I was kind of blessed. Not my, that, was not, that was not even my first one. But. I, I mean, even – I have accidents in my period all the time. Yeah, everyone because it does. Comes, it, I, my, my period is very irregular, but I am – I can't go on birth control. It I mean, makes me really, really sick. And I think I remember recently swiping up on your story and telling you, yes, you about did. that story. Because yes. I remember you being like, is there anything? I just like, got off in April. It's the worst. Um, I was on it for literally two weeks to try and regulate my periods. And it's the well, worst thing. <laughs> two weeks is, I feel like you need a little bit more time. It made me like, th- I couldn't. Like it, oh, it was oh. it was making me like throw up, pass out. Oh, yeah. Like I was, I couldn't do it. So I was like, ah, I can't do this. So yeah. Jeez. All right. Last one will be, are you, Bryce, and Taylor still close? Yeah. I mean, I think I'm still pretty close with Taylor. Like, I see him all the time, um, chat to him all the time. I wouldn't say I'm, like, close with Bryce. Like, I mean, I see him and we say hey and I love the guy to death. Yeah. But I wouldn't know, I wouldn't say we're, like, close, close. Mm-hmm. You know, not, not like we used to. We just both got super busy with work and he's doing whatever he's doing in work and I'm proud of him and I'm busy doing what I'm doing. So yeah, but I still love those boys to death. So we talked about a lot of things. Talked about a lot. This was great. <laughs> I like, re- this was probably one of like my favorite episodes. Thank you. And also just the story just really got me. <laughs> boy, boy, do wow. I have some stories. I'm yeah, we need to catch up yeah. even more, <laughs> but wow. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you to everyone for listening. Make sure you guys add us to your Spotify playlist. Make sure you rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts. Make sure you check out her podcast. Follow her on all our social media platforms. And I will see you guys next Thursday with Nick B. Thank you for having me. Bye, guys. Bye.